So uh, three, two. Um, so uh, uh, as you can imagine, this is uh, this is an improvement on some of our core capability and uh, core capabilities in the data warehouse. And just like I mentioned, for us to you know make a better and better product for open table formats and to get uh, some of the features that were available in the shared nothing into the shared. Uh, shared data model. So one of the new features that we introduced was random bucketing. Ran, uh, this is an easier way before you had to go and um, basically tell us what the bucketing you want to go do. Uh, this allows you to, to kind of make it much, much more automatic, right? Uh, we also have an optimized uh, table feature that uh, allows us to kind of do some performance enhancements about the way uh, we do some of the querying, uh, fast evolution, uh, fast schema evolution for for some, for the table structure, and we also have this uh, new capability about uh, automatic sto uh, storage cooldown. So in Star Rocks, if you use the community version, you can actually mix and match hard drive disks. So you can have SSDs and the traditional. Um, 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 uh, spindle-based disks from that standpoint. And so this allows you to move basically uh, data from SSDs to HDDs for um, efficient kind of hot, warm, hot, cold type of uh, data management. Very, very cool, cool feature, especially when you're uh, storing um, lots and lots of data. For data loading and unloading, uh, we uh, have we're investing more into the uh, files and pipe capability. So files, uh, our goal here is to deprecate some of our data, other data loading tools that we've had in the past, and move to this files capability, and that allows you the ability for you to to easily load, you know, parquet files, uh, uh, ORC files, ORC files. Uh, uh, whatnot into the system. It's much, much easier than some of the, you know, other various tools we had uh, to load in uh, Parquet uh, data. And we're enhancing that. We're going to be enhancing that throughout the entire three series. Um, Pipe was a way for us to fix the issues of us doing timeouts when we load in uh, gigabytes and terabytes of data into the system, right? So before we used to tell you to manually kind of you know, make the, the 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 data the data size import smaller and smaller. So pipe basically allows you to go in, and we do that automatically through the tool itself. And so you don't have to go and break down these files into smaller smaller chunks for us. Um, there's also some enhancements too, so to the way our we did for syntax. Uh, so this is like insert from files into files for us to have a more consistent behavior for us to load and unload. So these quality of life improvements will happen throughout the th entire three series. Just look out for this as, as time goes on. Uh, we added uh, for data querying is a new HTTP uh, SQL API. So this is a way for you to access Star Rocks without the MySQL client. You can just do HTTP call straight into Star Rocks itself. This is great for when you want to go and say, for instance, you have a, 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 a reactive website and you don't want to use the, the MySQL driver. You just want to be able to just, just make, you know, you know, call straight into the database, right? Uh, this is, uh, this now it gives you that capability and it gives you what we, we, what we've been talking about is this, you know, user facing analytics, uh, uh, real time analytics, uh, you know, capability for you, for you guys and treat the Star Wars more closer to OLTP, not a OLTP, but closer, right? Um, we also did some uh, enhancements for you to be able to optimize your uh, queries itself. So we have a query planner um, and uh, we made it, uh, and that's a great way for you to understand where are all the bottlenecks into your select statements and whatnot. Uh, and whether or not it's using a cache, whether it's using the materialized view, we've enhanced it a bit so that it so that you can get even more detailed information on how to how to enhance uh, your queries for performance. 
Uh, I mentioned a little bit about is our goal is to move features on over from shared nothing to shared data. So we moved over some of the uh, 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 indexes for primary key uh, to shared data uh, and be able to persist that onto, um, onto storage, right? Um, uh, S3 storage. Um, so there was enhancements there. There is also uh, enhancements to how we go and uh, use cache across the various systems. Uh, overall, uh, I think you'll find that our, our shared data is just getting improved more and more over time. Uh, and this will uh, happen across the entire three series. Uh, I mentioned uh, also in some of the previous slides about us better supporting um, uh, the various open table por formats. So we've been adding support for the ability to have uh, write abilities in uh, Apache Hive. We already do it for Iceberg. We're working on some of the other table formats as, as the uh, three series goes on. Uh, we also provide now is a unified uh, external catalog. So before you'd have to build a catalog for uh, Iceberg, uh, a catalog for Hoodie, a catalog for Hive. Now you can have one catalog and they can have all three different types or four types inside of one single catalog. So now that allows you to do uh, much, much easier for you to do joins across all these different types of data sets. Right or you know you can do a join across Hive, Iceberg, and and Hoodie at the same time essentially right. Um, also, uh, you know, a better um, giving you we, we now store more data in uh, in uh, the uh, metadata uh, tables uh, within Starrock. So this allows you to have better integration with. Um, with other BI tools in the marketplace, so uh, I, I think you'll 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 find that as a, a quality of life improvement, especially if you're on uh, you know Superset, Metabase, Tabular, and, and so forth. Uh, materialized views. Uh, this is one of the best ways for you to get better performance uh, uh, in Star Rocks itself. So obviously, if you just make queries against uh, uh, against you know um, the raw data, uh, the the way you get better performance would have been you know better partitioning, for instance, right? But if you want to get even better, faster speeds, is to use uh, a materialized views uh, with some of the other caching abilities that we have, right? So if you are using materialized views from that standpoint. Uh, we are, uh, the biggest, one of the biggest things that I like is now we have a tunable, transparent rewriting capability. So, um, essentially with materialized views, uh, when you do a query against materialized views, sometimes, uh, Star Rocks will rewrite the query from that standpoint. And the problem is, is that when, when Star Rocks rewrites the, the, the query in real time, it might not be the most optimal way based on the way that you've laid out the data and, and the workload patterns and uh, whatnot. So now providing you a way for it to be more tunable, it allows you to get even better performance than what quote unquote Star Rocks thinks the rewriting should be, right? Um, we also have some other enhancements around is incremental refreshes for Iceberg and Paimon, right? So this is yet again is, you know, being able to go and use uh, the open table formats uh, better and better and better. Uh, there is also another type of materialized view that we support. Uh, so this is called synchronous. Uh, most of the users use asynchronous. So this is analogous to a rollup table if you're familiar with this concept. Uh, we basically added some some additional features for the synchronous materialized views slash rollup materialized views. Uh, new thing that also came on out is this row column mixed storage. Uh, so uh, uh, we are releasing this. I think this is in a, is a preview, but the idea here is that we are 
so Starbucks is a columnar database, right? So columnar meaning that we store things vertically. So say, for instance, if you had a column called uh, uh, employee number from that standpoint, right? We store basically the data vertically and uh, as like, you know, instead of uh, first name, last name, employee number, it's just a bunch of employee numbers from that standpoint, all right? Be why? Because if you do things like the unique, entry, uh, unique command, that's much more faster than doing a for loop and then looking at every single um, employee ID number. It's just faster. You just like, just look at the employee number and just, just do, a, uh, do, do a count against it, right? So by us providing is uh, row data inside of the columnar, we don't actually have to go and do uh, for loops the entire time. And so this allows us to do uh, for specific use cases, uh, a way for us to do faster lookups uh, on primary key tables. Really, really cool. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of other uh, various enhancements uh, uh, across the board, right? Uh, I think the, the bigger thing from that standpoint is uh, um, supporting prepared statements now, uh, being able to have better compatibility with Metabase and Superset, uh, and also, there is this thing called the Star, Star Rocks Migration Tool. Uh, we built it in-house, uh, but we are deprecating that in favor of Apache Flink 3.0 CDC. So the idea here is that if you're coming from a different database uh, and you're trying to migrate from data, like, you know, this is terabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes of data, right? Uh, we encourage you to use the Apache Flink uh toolkit there's a article of how to go in and be able to use this tool to migrate your data from one database to another All right um so i'm going to touch a little bit on seller data cloud 3.3.2 right so yet again this is outside of our community product we're gonna talk a little bit about the the commercial offering for seller data now there is a bunch of other enhancements. They they get all the community stuff, but one of the things that they will have that the community won't have is this idea of multi warehouse. So, uh, you know, you can imagine if you're using the shared data model, you're like going, okay, if if the compute nodes are ephemeral, and storage is now up on S3, can't we just go and you know have different type of workloads against that S3, right? So yes, to up to a certain extent, right? So meaning that on a single cluster, you can go and uh, access that S3. But what if you wanted to go and says, I have a cluster that is only dedicated to reads and I, have a, I want a cluster that's only dedicated to writes, right? And I want them all to point to the, only, to the same, S, uh, same data on S3, right? So this capability is being released in Seller Data Cloud um and so here i have a little diagram that says like we have a dedicated read for a business unit and then there's a business shared read traffic cluster and then there's a write write traffic and so the ideal use case that you have is like you're not writing all the time so maybe you can scale that down differently so the write traffic only happens because you're only doing writes maybe uh, every hour we only provision the the star rocks cluster for an hour run it for 10 minutes to do all the writes and then then we, then we shut that down right but then the dedicated uh cluster happens 24 hours from that standpoint right uh or the 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 the, the read uh read uh, cluster maybe it's peaky maybe it's like people only do all the reporting in uh when they come into the office but they don't use it throughout the rest of the day so why don't we elastically scale the read cluster to be 20 nodes at nine o'clock in the morning, but by 11 o'clock, it's only three nodes uh, from that standpoint, right? So this capability of having elasticity uh, along with being able to isolate traffic uh, for the for various you know, business units or various use cases, we call this multi-warehouse and it's gonna be only available in Seller Data Cloud. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's it for the uh, three two. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for joining the session. And so uh, right now I'm going to take uh, questions from uh, chat. All right. So uh, let's see here. Uh, we have a question here that says, what are the best practices that you would advise inco uh, incomers from other data warehouse systems? Um, yeah. So uh, best practices, right? So um, uh, it's really a case by case basis, uh, unfortunately, because each OLAP database, uh, you, you know, you're if you're talking about, you know, from Redshift, from from Snowflake, or from ClickHouse, or from Druid, right? They all have strengths and weaknesses from that standpoint, right? And so uh, I, I would ask these questions in the forums. And so then that way we can go and at, give you really, really specific advice uh, coming back, right? Because in certain cases where, say, for instance, uh, you know, uh, you're coming, for instance, from Druid, right? Most people who use Druid, they, they're de normalizing data, right? And so our advice for you, best practice here, normalize everything back. Make it easiest for you to go and do pipeline. Right, make the pipeline as easiest as you can on, on possible, and then just optimize things on the Star Rock side, which is through maybe partitioning, through uh, replication of the data itself, uh, with the ability to go and maybe you know use materialized views, enable caching on the various queries. Right, so we cache the intermediate queries along with the final final queries. Right. Uh, you know, enable the ability for you to do predicate push down, right? That kind of stuff, right? So uh, I always kind of think of it where, um, you know, make your life simpler and then push those problems onto Star Rocks as much as possible. Now, if you're coming from another uh, database, like say for instance, from Snowflake, right? Some people really write really specialized um uh, snowflake queries, right, to get the maximum performance out of it, right? And then I would tell you in that best practice to sort of say, you know, let Star Rocks's rewriting capabilities handle that for you, right? Write the SQL statement that makes it easiest for other data engineers and developers to read. And then let Star Rocks go and rewrite that to make it the, the most optimal query inside of the star rocks engine right so yet again this is this is this is you know trying to make your life easier don't try to figure out how how i should rewrite this in a certain way because i want to use this capability in star rocks da, 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 right so make it you know build a simple case make the readability use case first and then let's evolve that 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 query statement and or enable certain features inside of Star Rocks to get you better, better performance. Right. Okay. Uh, next question here is: uh, What's the difference between community and enterprise to manage service? Right. So I mentioned this a little bit before, uh, but uh, essentially, uh, community uh, that the enterprise and the enterprise version. Uh, which is also deployed on the cloud version has security features beyond uh, beyond the community. So community, for instance, doesn't have if you connect with the MySQL drivers to do queries, it doesn't even have TLS uh, uh, capability. It's basically clear text the entire way on through. So if you want the TLS connectivity between your MySQL driver and Star Rocks, it's only available in the enterprise version. Uh, and in the uh, the cloud version. And then other features like, for instance, encryption at rest or whatnot, these ones would only exist inside of the uh, enterprise and or cloud version. Uh, uh, the other thing that you will typically see is uh, the managed service, right? So a managed service is not your only going to get support, uh, which is also available in the enterprise version, but you will also get is full, uh, you know, management of the, uh, of the instance itself. So things like maybe um, um, uh, if there's an issue or no down or something like that, you know, there are tools and capabilities that the managed services provides to, to either notify you or bring those systems back on up. 
right? So just think of it as it's the same thing as any managed service that you would, you know, get from Snowflake, you know, Redshift, BigQuery-ish, right? There are some slight differences, but, uh, you know, that's generally the idea of managed service. Uh, next question, uh, is using HTTP faster than using the MySQL driver? Uh, yes. So uh, it, it, here's the thing. the My, Because we emulate the MySQL driver, the MySQL driver was designed for OLTP. So OLTP is, you know, single records, very, very fast inserts, very fast updates and deletes from that standpoint. But when you're trying to do something like, I want to load 5,000 records, right? Like MySQL will do it, right? But does it do it optimally? No, that's the problem, right? And so uh, when you're loading in lots and lots of data, so this is when on the inserts, right? Uh, that's why we provide uh, a tool like Streamload. And Streamload basically bypasses the FE, the emulation layer, and goes straight to the back end nodes and then starts persisting that data because then we, do, we can avoid the you know, deconstruction of the MySQL protocol. Uh, that's one aspect. And also we don't have to pay for all these other penalties along the way, right? Of, of you know, processing all the MySQL, you know, syntax from that, and then go straight uh, in, in to start persisting the data. And, and we also have a commit all or nothing. So we'll either give you, uh, you know, if you're committing uh, with Streamload, uh, you know, a thousand records, ten thousand records. We'll either say commit all, or we'll roll back all, right? So you'll get that type of notification from that standpoint. Um, there are other other enhancements, but generally, yes. So, so the MySQL, I would give you the general advice: is the MySQL driver is primarily used for selects, deletes, and updates, right? Uh, mostly for selects, right? Because it's you know. It, it, you're pulling out data from that standpoint and it's easy for you to use the MySQL syntax from that standpoint. And generally speaking for inserting data, I would recommend is the, 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 the HPP load, right? Now, uh, say for instance, you don't want to use the HPP load or, or, you know, is the performance that bad? You know, I, I, if you're doing lots of data, yeah, the time uh, the time that you're waiting, maybe uh, you know, it's better for you for the HTTP. But that doesn't mean don't use the the the, the MySQL driver in all instances, right? Use the MySQL dri driver, right? It's it's just that if you're wanting to get the best performance, right, then you should look at the the HTTP. Uh, next question is moving the persistent data from FE to shared storage on the roadmap, um, uh, to shared storage. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll repeat again. Is moving the persistent data on FE nodes to shared storage on the roadmap so that the entirety of the data and metadata exists in, in cloud storage? Uh, yeah. So, so right now, uh, uh, there is uh, FEs do store in the shared data model. Uh, FEs do store some of the data on local disk, and there is work to move all of it into into cloud. Right. Um, so essentially, what happens is that uh, that uh, if if you needed it, if that FE nodes goes down, uh, you would have to go and start back up as a new FE. And um, and uh, whatever quote unquote um, uh, data or knowledge that it had, right? It, it had to start from scratch again, right? So it's like as if you're doing a cold start. Um, so yes, it's being worked on. Uh, I don't have an ETA of when it will be finished, um, but uh, we are working on it. Uh, another question, do you plan to use network file systems for data, maybe cold data like that on S3 or HDFS, right? So uh, I don't quite understand this question, meaning that if you use the shared data model, it's it's you're going to store all the data in S3 anyhow, right? Uh, the the so, we already support it today. 
uh, if you're talking about the shared nothing, right? So in the shared nothing, I mentioned that the 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 disk is shared uh, is stored uh, is is co-located on the same node, right? Um, so all the data that you write with the Starworks table format is going to be stored on local disk. Now there is a slight star 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 with it. Is that what if you're using uh, uh, hoodie or iceberg data in shared nothing, right? Well, that data typically is stored already in S3. So what we do is we connect to the external catalog, which would in turn connect to those S3 buckets for getting the the um, iceberg or the, or the hoodie uh, hoodie data, right? So, um, and, you know, I think you, uh, I would uh, ask for you to go and maybe ask a more expanded version of this question inside of inside of the forums and then that way I can go and uh, give you a better better answer to it. All right. So it looks like that's all the questions I see. Uh, thank you again for taking time out of your day to attend this session. And I look forward to talking to you on uh, on the community forums. Uh, or uh, actually in one of our other web sessions or face-to-face uh, -face events. Thank you again.